Kathy, welcome back. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. How are you? Good. Uh, great to have you back, Kathy, with the market, uh, uh, you know, levitating up here. Um, I understand from our communications on uh, Twitter, there's not much new going on. Um, you know, the only uh, IPO I could think of that, uh, you know, I uh, had like the initial sell-off after it went public along with Bitcoin was uh, Coinbase. And uh, if you're ready to share your screen, it's at Green Box. Uh, we could talk about what's on your mind. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, Dale, I, I feel like I've been saying this, you know, ever since we had our great year 2020. You know, things are just uh, in the IPO kind of slow as far as new IPOs. You know, we've talked about this many times. You know, we had Zoom and we had right. Fiverr and yeah, you know, they had these great runs and, and, and now they've just been consolidating. You know, Zoom could be coming back here at some point. Um, you know, last time we actually talked about the mental capital preservation, 35%. It actually did break that and then kind of held it. Let's just look at it real quick just to connect what we talked about last time. It was right in here was the 35. Yeah. And, and maybe now it's it's building some type of base, you know, if it, if, okay. if it can get back and stay over this 40 weeks. So, you know, there's there's potential in some of the leaders that we had last year. Um, but as far as new leaders, when I, when I look at the screen, you know, and we look at like the liquid leaders coin is actually number two right now. So we'll definitely okay. look at that one. Um, it's some, usually number one. I was surprised to see it number two. I mean, we've got Airbnb, you know, recent IPO came out the end of last year, but you know, it's still, it's still in that due diligence phase, you know, it had a yeah. run up and now it's, it's, it's going sideways, you know, it hasn't even Back to the IPO uh, price, the opening day. We're back there, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I got to put my glasses on. So $68 So was, was the IPO price. But the low okay. of that first week was 135 And which yeah. it did, let's see, it did undercut it right here, which is, is totally normal. And actually, it undercut it the second week. But, you know, I think this has potential, but it's, it's still early. And... Um, you know, we would call this a late bloomer pattern so far, at least, because it had the initial run up and now it's, it's in that due diligence phase. And when I look at coin, you know, it's, it's a pump and dump. It's been, it's been going yeah. down ever since it came out. Now it is starting to go sideways. It's, it's holding a range, you know, I've got some alerts here I'm watching, of course. Um, right. But again, you know, to me, it's still early. Now we've got earnings. This, this is, again, this is the market Smith. I subscribe to market Smith. Okay. Um, you know, it looks, so it's here. I just noticed it's, it's going to report earnings in, in 13 days, I guess it looks like. Okay. So, you know, we'll see, is that going to be a catalyst? Um, but, but, but again, you know, for what I have observed and what we've noticed, you know, we weren't able to pinpoint an exact time frame. but the due diligence phase, you know, for me is, is really 40 weeks, right around that 40 weeks, maybe plus or minus two or three weeks is at least a minimum amount of time, you know, before. Okay. Yeah. You know, so. And you're and, not, you're not committing capital during the due diligence phase. You're just monitoring uh, the activity, right? Well, this next one we're looking at snow. I, I have been taking some nibbles and I, and I okay. was telling some, I was on a, did a, stint with IBD live last week. And I was telling them that I was making some nibbles and I was doing it on snow in here. And then let me go to a daily chart. So I was drawing some trend lines. Well, this is an old one, uh, but this is, this is actually one of the ones I use. And I just took a nibble, like 1%, Dale, you know, I just yeah. get my wet. It's been holding it for the most part, but again, it's, it's, it's early, uh, but at least this one, this black line right here, and you can see it better, I think on the weekly, well, just barely, but you know, it's, it's finally at that 40 weeks. So it's, it's, it's been over 40 weeks. So to me, you know, if I'm looking at which one has, you know, more potential, you know, I'm looking at this one above, you know, like coin where I think it needs time. That makes sense. Okay. Cause uh, they, they probably, you know, uh, coin is completely crypto 
dominated. Uh, this is software enterprise. Yeah, I mean, so, okay. you know, it's the first it's the first one out there that allows people to go in there and and buy the actual cryptocurrency. It's 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 amazing what what changes we're seeing in the world. <laughs> yeah. But even this up down ratio, uh, you know, this is a, a sign of accumulation. You know, we like to see this at 1.0 or more. And it's about, it's not even above one, it's 0.8. So that says distribution currently. Up-down ratio is very important to you. Yes. Yes. Okay. I like to see this. And above that's volume? One. Yes. This is based on 50-day average volume. Okay. Um, and I want to say over the last 50 days, if I remember correctly. Yep. It's just a calculation based on daily average volume. Okay. So uh, we're already seven months into uh, 2021. Any uh, has IPO activity slowed because of uh, their other options of going to a SPAC or something else instead of going to an IPO um, as their listing choice? You know that that's a great question. Um, I really don't think so because even when I look at the SPACs. Um, you know, and someone was asking me this question the other day on Twitter. Let me pull up my SPAC list. Um, you know, these are volatile patterns. <laughs> they sure are broadening. <laughs> They're higher highs, lower lows. Yeah. Okay. And, and just look at these, you know, I mean. Oh, yeah. And they're all, you know, it's, we're, you know, still haven't really evaluated them all heavily. I mean, DraftKings is a little bit more one of the exceptions. Um Someone asked, the one that someone asked me about the other day was Lucid. And I feel like this, this, this is what I see a lot of. You have this initial advance, which I'm calling unofficially the SPAC advance phase, like the IPO advance phase. Right. And, then, and then it goes also, it comes back down and it's going sideways. So I feel like this is now the SPAC due diligence phase. And we're seeing this in a lot of them. Um, I think IPOE is another, or one of the IPO. Oh, it already changed its name. So if I... I believe, you know, similar pop and now it's going sideways. You know, this would still be um, the do the turbulent zone, like we would apply for the IPO phase. And so I don't, I don't know if I would necessarily say, oh, well, the IPOs aren't doing well because they're going into SPACs. I mean, I think the SPACs have a lot more fanfare and news and, you know, what's and, going on. And volatility and so too. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But it, it seems so far that you could still apply the principles of the patterns that we see in the IPOs to the SPACs. And you could probably use, and you know, I haven't researched this heavily yet, but like the data when, okay, there is going to be a proposed merger. Okay, start monitoring the action from there. And that's usually like that start of that initial advance phase. And then when the actual deal closes, it seems like, okay, now there's this due diligence period where now the institutions are really trying to decide, okay, well, now that all this like fanfare and all the news is dying down, is something we want to invest in the long haul? And that's what we don't know yet is if we're going to see these great advanced phases like we see in the IPOs after that due diligence phase. Let me ask you this, this, Kathy. You've seen so many of these things repeat over and over again that pretty close to the day of or the day after an IPO is usually a peak. Are you ever tempted to short new IPOs going into a due diligence phase? You ever That's do that? That's a great question. That's a great question, Dale. Because, yeah, no. I mean, you see this pattern over and over again. I'm sure it's crossed your mind. Uh, how much is this IPO going to drop before we get into the due diligence phase? Right, right. Well, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't want to call myself a one trick pony, but in a way I am, you know, I really just like to go long. I like to always stay focused and, and, and be on the positive side. And, and it's probably, you know, I always seem to bring up William O'Neill and every talk that I conversation right. I have with someone because, you know, he really wasn't into shorting and he just always wanted to focus on the long side. So I just, I don't, and, you know, I like taking the breaks. I got to be honest. I haven't been trading a whole lot because I'm waiting for these setups. And I think I'm okay with that. You know, I don't always have to be trading and looking for getting every piece in every possible scenario. Yeah. Sometimes you see things better um, 
not having a lot of positions on. You see the forest from the trees and you kind of become, even if you say you're detached, uh, more subjective once you're in a position. Exactly. Right. And I would hate to yeah. miss a long position because I was focusing too hard on trying to get a short position. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, with what's going on here, uh, any effect on um, some of the things that you trade with what's been happening in China? With you know, them raining <laughs> in technology stocks, et cetera? You know, I haven't, I, I don't normally trade China stocks either. I, I try to stay um, just the U.S. You know, there's been questions at times about um, the fundamentals and, and the reporting of the China stocks. And so for yeah. the most part, I, I will steer clear of that. Uh, one thing I did want to share, though, you know, just to again point out to everybody about the differences between 2020 and 2021 is when I look at, you know, okay, so if I year to date IPOs from 2019 to 2021, and you know, this is just a quick screen that I did, you know, I don't include ETFs. Um, yeah. I don't have REITs in here. This is 2019 to 2021. And that liquidity that I've talked to you about many times, we wanted right. $20 million a day or more. And I just want to see from 2019. Okay. So we're going back two years, how many are up a hundred percent or more this year? And you only get seven. Huh? The, so, I mean, again, there's just not, and these are all like in mode was great. If you got it in the institution due diligence phase, you know, this was the first mature base right here and you could still be holding it. Unfortunately, this isn't one that I have, um, okay. but you know, they're just, and I think this one's a biotech, but there's just, um, there's not just not much. a lot of new merchandise. And if I look uh -huh. at just, just one more point real quick, if I look oh, at 2021, ahead. Now there's 75 that were liquid out of 288. So again, that gives you that liquidity piece. But if I put that 100% on this for 2021, and you know we're seven months in, I don't yeah. get I get zero. I get zero that are up 100% for the year. Okay. So that, that's interesting. So it's okay, just a so function of, of where we are in in the market as far as IPOs. You know, we're like it's rotation for st and we're still waiting. For these these new ones to, to set up and 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 create a rotation, and then of course we're going to need the market to, to support it as well. And as you know, uh, some of the big players on the S and P have actually been leading more than the growth at times this year. Got a little bit of pullbacks and a little yeah. sideways action on the Nasdaq, and um, so even you know even yesterday we we pulled back to the, the to the twenty one EMA. So you know. We're going to be hitting some turbulence here as we try to break some new highs. So we're going to have to say. Okay. All right. So definitely, uh, and I remember you were so looking forward to 2021 when we were talking last year to see what was I going was, to be in the right? Pipeline. Yeah. So, you <laughs> and know, I still I mean, am. You know, I'm still hopeful. You ever hear this? Man plans, God laughs. So, uh, anyway, um, uh, looking at at this and you're you're looking at the nasdaq uh, i know that you know your uh, trading isn't your thing but do you think this could be kind of a sign that the appetite and all the liquidity that people talk about might be drying up and that's why not as many companies are coming to market and the ones that are are not attracting the volume that they did uh last year when there was more euphoria and you would think there'd be more euphoria now because the market has advanced and taken out last year's highs by a mile yeah but it's know, been thin uh, it's been thin i mean all you could look at all the advanced decline lines even in nasdaq and uh with nasdaq making new highs uh it's very 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 um a negative breath at new highs in nasdaq it's one of the worst if you put up AD or breath against NASDAQ. You'll see with price making new highs, we're not even close to uh, the highs of breath and advanced decline lines here. So you think that could be part of it? Maybe it's a sign that the character of the market, and even though the Fed has been easy, um, that liquidity for these things just isn't there like it was last year? I mean, I think, you know, anything is possible, right? Yeah. But, you know, we're, 
it's still, you know, the year's not over. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, there's still, there's still leaders in the market, you know, on CrowdStrike, you know, yeah. it's a great IPO for 2020. And it's, it's one of those examples that's, that's had the full, held the full year dry. Starting to but really you can't throw out. a dart. You can't throw a dart anymore. And have yeah, all of this work. right. The dart is not there. I mean, Snap had yeah. amazing earnings last week. You know. Yeah. Um, it's just that the new, the the new IPOs, they're, they're just it's not their time yet. And you know, there's there's tons of great stocks, but you have you know you got to be there at the right time, right? And, and you, have, have to, you have to keep your discipline. If you have measurements on volume for things to qualify, you have to, you can't change your rules just because, uh, you know, there isn't as much activity. That exactly. would be like FOMO, right, Kathy? Right, exactly. You're exactly right. Um, you know, I want to look at, uh, I do want did want to share this one coming out of an IPO base, uh, Doximity. Um, you know, I do like to play these, um, IPO advances at times. I don't particularly have this one, but just to give some, I have a friend, Will Jim Ropel, you, you may have heard of him. He does his interviews and he likes to call the candy. <laughs> so for, for candy, um, this proximity one is really interesting because, uh, it's barely been trading and already has two. Uh, what we call IBD mutual funds in it. So one of the, what IBD Bill O'Neill would claim, you know, the more quality institutional funds uh, already owning it. And it's got an IPO base. It did try to break out and came back down, which is totally normal. Um, but, you know, this, this could be one that uh, maybe has a successful IPO advance phase. And, you know, by the time while we're waiting for some of these uh, due diligence phases to uh, finish out. Okay. Well, uh, Kathy, uh, being as patient as you are, and I think that's uh, a great quality to have and not to be frustrated because there uh, isn't as much to do. What's the best way for people to follow your work? And uh, I think it's great to talk about patients uh, and, and then walk the talk and to show people that um, you don't have to be in the market all the time, that, it, that uh, less is more. So um, what's the best way for people to follow you, uh, subscribe, um, and when things believe, pick up, be with you? Yeah, I do believe less is, less is more. Um, you know, I like, I, you know, I, I like being able to, you know, go out and, and you know, I exercise a lot. I'll, I'll share with everyone, you know, I'm getting ready to do a half Ironman in a couple of weeks. So, you know, I'm, wow. I'm really busy with trading. So in a way, this, this slower market for me because I'm looking for those early leaders that are still building bases. I've had more, more time to focus on that and just still keep my eye on the market, of course, but I don't have to be as closely tied, but yeah, I'm happy to answer questions on Twitter. Uh, this is my handle KGD underscore investor. And then of course, interviews I've done and my co-authors have done are on the lifecycletrade.com. We'll of course post this one as well. And, uh, and then if you're interested in the book, of course, it's on Amazon and, again, talks about all the phases and patterns that you and I have been discussing over the last year now. How long have we been talking? For a while yeah, now. Yeah, it's got to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I look forward to it. And uh, let me coach you, Kathy Donnelly, keep running your race in the market and in the Ironman. And, oh, thank uh, you. Yeah, and good luck in both uh, arenas. And uh, appreciate you coming here and, uh, you know, just telling it like it is with what's happening and even uh, reporting to us not much right now. And uh, uh, appreciate you giving us your time and coming here, even if there's not much to talk about. So uh, appreciate you being here and uh, people interested in IPOs. Um, Kathy's a very good specialist when it comes to this. And as you could tell, um, is patient. So thank you, my trading warrior sister, for being with us again today. 
Thank you so much, Dale. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, um, you know, welcoming me, my insights. Cause yeah, I mean, I think just for some people, it may be like, wow, it's so boring. She, she's not really trading, but you know, like you said, I'm just waiting for the best setups for me. And so we I think get paid people, to wait, Kathy. Exactly. You know, so people, you know, figure out what your strengths are and, and really, really hone in on your strengths. You don't have to be good at everything, but just be really good at a few things and then you will succeed. Thank you, Iron Woman. <laughs> thank you, Dale. All right. That's a wrap, everyone. Uh, thank you again, Kathy. Remember, everyone, uh, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Good luck with the Fed today. You could join the crew in 20 minutes on Morning Edge, and I'll see you tomorrow. Adios. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs>